My name is Claire Thompson, and the name of my play is Winter Glow. I came up with the idea for Winter Glow about five years ago, after reflecting on my parents' dramatic start of their marriage and the obstacles they had to overcome. And it was during the, the days of the 20s and 30s, and the music from that time always intrigued me. And one day in my recent life, I began reflecting on the drama of their lives and thinking good, you know, this would make a great show. Together, you know. Be together. Sure. The idea, the very idea. What do you take me for? I've heard enough. It's time for you to go. You walked me down that garden path. I couldn't see it. You were much too smooth. I talked to my girl about men like you. I thought about it first. I thought about the drama of the situation in the family, that it was dramatic, and it was all related to music. So I thought, it would go together and make a good, somebody ought to write this musical. And then I thought, who else should do it but you? And so I thought I would. Do you take me for a fool? Does this mean anything to you? So, um, how many musicals have you written in your life? This is my first. This is my first. I wasn't born yesterday. Tell me about meeting Paul and how Paul sort of changed oh, your life a little yes, bit. Yes, Paul was instrumental. I struggled with it and I finally got it written. Claire took a class at the University of Georgia to be a playwright. Um, she wrote and wrote and wrote and, uh, and eventually brought me a script. I made an appointment, went in to see him and told him I had this play. And he said, wow and he immediately got interested in it. And then she told me that it was to be a musical, and I said, well, Claire, do you have the music? And she looked at me and she said, no, I guess that would be important. <laughs> to be honest with you, when she walked out of my office that day, I thought, sure you will. Um, and, and I never expected uh, that she would return. But it was probably four years later, she walked back in and handed me a CD, and it had 20 originals written and sung by a student from the University of Georgia that she had hired on her own. Money, position, and power. Oh, money, position, and power. Yes, money, position, and power. person who you know is capable of producing this, this, this creation of yours, what, what went through your mind when he said, we're going to produce this thing? It blew my mind. I was exhilarated and terrified at the same time. Why were you terrified? Such a big thing, and I had no experience in theater. No experience. Uh, being affiliated with the Classic Center, being affiliated with the Cultural Foundation, um, our cultural foundation does just that. It, it wants to lift artists up. And so we have a 20-person uh, board of directors that really, really care uh, about arts today in Athens and what it will be in the future. 
And so my first stop was to go back and ask the Cultural Foundation if I would have their support. I am Elizabeth Austin, and I am the director of the Classic Center Cultural Foundation here at the Classic Center. The Classic Center Cultural Foundation was started in 2001 to support the Classic Center and its initiatives, as well as the arts in and around Athens. This production of Winter Glow is actually the first time that the foundation has been able to work with somebody who has produced an original musical. Um, we've never been able to help get involved with somebody who has launched a project like this from the ground up and produced it here locally. Um, and so the opportunity to be involved with it was really historic for us. There were so many things running through my head. Um, do I have the time to really do this? Do I even know where to begin to go? I've never done this kind of thing before. Um, but I knew that we were in a university town and George Foreman uh, was the, the director of the theater at uh, the University of Georgia. And he had more musical background um, and, and I knew that he could help guide me. And one of the first things he said was, yes, you have the songs on a CD, but, but if it's ever to come to life, you need someone who can actually write the arrangement of the music so that musicians can play this. Uh, I had a couple of trusted friends in Marcus Bess and Alan who helped us with the weekend getaway band. And they said, you know, Paul, there's really something to this. Paul had mentioned Winter Glow, or at least a musical, several years earlier. And, uh, you know, time passed, never really heard much about it. And then all of a sudden, one day he calls and he goes, this thing's going to be real. We're going to make this happen. And uh, in fact, he had a date. He had booked the theater. Um, his challenge to us was to help bring the music to life. They said, you know, the best thing you could do is really bring this to a community theater group that does this all the time and it's a brand new play, so let's do it in a smaller house and let's see if we can't really get a crowd. Well, Tim I had known from, from the Classic Center. He's my director of operations. His wife is an actress and uh, was the executive director of Rose of Athens. And he said, Paul, I really think that this would be a good fit for Rose of Athens. So I met Helen, I talked through it with her and uh, she read the script, fell in love with it, and she said, I, I know we can bring this to life. And uh, it took off from there. You know, the great thing about Marcus and Alan is just the, I think they tapped into that thing that we were all trying to kind of tap into, that mm -hmm. kind of underlying beauty of it all, this really neat, um, it wasn't just novelty, it was actually something a little bit deeper. We listened to the tracks, we looked at the charts, and um, read the script, read the script, wanted to get our idea, our head around really uh, the storyline, and, and I went and listened to a read, and that's really when I connected with this the storyline of the play was to kind of get a sense of the emotion and the passion, obviously, that had gone into writing the play. Which song had the most potential before you started uh, uh, influencing the music a little bit? Hmm, that's a good question. I li I've lived this long to love you. 
What about that song? It was song? just, the melody was beautiful, the chord changes were pretty, the message was there. Um, it was just something about the way the melody settled in the music and the way um, he was singing to his, his lover, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a really beautiful song. doing if you want to uh, talk you through a little bit of it I would look at what would rhyme what made sense I would take a line from the second verse maybe move it to the first verse just because it fit better it's sort of like a puzzle you know um, throwing a puzzle out on a table and then putting all the pieces back together maybe scrabble is another analogy we could use and then I begin to get something on uh, some of the words that would rhyme so till I met you life was prosaic what I'm feeling just can't convey it. So that just made, me, made a lot of sense to me. What you did to me was quite a surprise, that look, that voice, that kiss, those eyes. And I went, hmm, I, I kind of like that. Marcus and I agreed. Yep. This is something yep. we can do something with. So just out of the blue, I was just kind of messing around with chords as we do as uh, you know, musicians and creators and writers and things that don't recall what all the, the other song was, but it was, uh, it was more in a different meter, two, four, one, two, three. It's kind of dark, okay? And then maybe went to a major there. I'm just looking at the chords here. And it had a lot of, a lot of darkness going on. So we wanted to bring some light to it. So a lot of those kind of chords, right? Okay, so then I said, hmm, let me take that chord right there. And I just started going... so prosaic and we just came up with a little swing thing just started making it happen like that you know just one thing that's another It's all brand new, this sudden feeling. You took me over, you got me reeling. Without even trying, you made me your slave. So unexpected, oh, I don't know how to behave. So that's how it came, we came up with it. So just kind of messing around with some things. Yeah, that's so cool. And so, what? what so you, you you talk about uh, sort of taking some of the darkness out of it, or just adding some some light to it, and make it lift a little bit. Why yeah. is that important? Well, well just th let's just think of the concept of uh, people in love. Uh, if somebody knocks my sock, socks off, I want to let them know in a, in a good way, an uplifting way. And as you saw in the play, I mean, he was dancing all around Lily and uh, Maxwell's and that kind of thing. And, uh, I couldn't imagine it being any other way. Do you remember the crowd's reaction? Did you hear the crowd's reaction when the, when the song finished? I did somewhat, but having to, you know, uh, also be attentive to Ollie and Marcus in the next part in the play, I was just kind of looking at my charts and my books. And well, they loved it. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> just in case you wanted to know. Yeah. From the very beginning, I knew um, pretty, pretty much everyone that we had from other shows. So I had kind of a little bit of a personal relationship with each of them. Um, I 
love Marty and Steven individually. So putting them together was a lot of fun. That actually got to be or probably my favorite parts was when they kind of knew what they were doing and just started playing with each other, um, watching them be themselves and be someone else at place. the same time is a lot of fun. Just look at that view. Hmm. Anyway, so what delicious tidbit have you prepared for me today? Voila. Uh, <laughs> Grapefruit as usual. Good. I can't get enough of it. Oh, you luscious, juicy, rosy glow. So round, so firm, so fully packed. Without you, life would be sober. But with you, my deck is stacked. I know I'm lucky, That's sure I am, one. to Maybe. find you here with my <laughs> toast and jam. Hello, boys, give <laughs> me Florida anytime. You can take California, New York is fine. Or travel out to the wild, wild <laughs> west. But I love sunny Florida grapefruit best. Marty was already a part of Rose of Athens. She was actually in the first show that I did with Rose of Athens. Um, what made you sure she was right for this role? At the table read, she just, she got Lily in a way that I don't know that a lot of people would because she has a similar background as an artist with a family, right. you know, it's, um, I think Lily was relatable for her. You love him. Oh, do you love him more than you love daddy? I love him differently. That was a young love, all yearning and hope. How else could we dare? So much was unknown. How else could we weather such storms? But oh, how I miss that safe harbor we found. Now I see a different rainbow. Hear a different song. Something new had happened that wasn't there before. Now I've found a different harbor to be sheltered in. I couldn't see it coming, didn't have a clue. But now a door has opened, and now I've seen the view. I don't blame you for doubting it could really be true. Why shouldn't I know that warm winter glow that's melted the snow deep inside me? This never happened, couldn't have happened, this never ever happened. You know, I think what we ultimately with everyone, you know, the, the, the underlying passion that I really think came from Paul and Claire, you know, kind of sharing that with everyone um, and, and kind of helping them see, I mean, it's just how cool is this whole thing? You know, it's not, I guarantee it's not something that that any one of them have done before, and, and most of them probably won't do it again. It was a really cool experience, uh, one of those life-defining experiences, I think, to undertake a project of this magnitude, this much work to um, recraft the music. Um, and I think it's something we'll look back on for forever and value and treasure. It was v very rewarding, it was uh, humbling, it was a boost of confidence all of those things, and it gave me a new insight into my own capabilities and potentials. Isn't that cool, man, to be like, <laughs> you know, I mean, we're not young, man, like to be coming across stuff and being like, oh man, I got, I got this too? Yeah, I can do this. Yeah. I can do this. It was very, very rewarding and uh, absolutely worth it, and I would do it all over again. 
do you have a favorite line that you, is there, is there a line in this play that you feel sort of? Says it all. Says it all. Uh, what yes. line says it all? Patient with me a little bit. Yeah, you take your time. Does it matter that it's near the end? No. With a little bit of tune to it? If you want. Come, some chords come first, then it says... I knew I broke their hearts in two when I sent them so far away. I didn't know what else to do. It seemed to me then he just couldn't stay. Their trap caught you in just the same way, like sun. Like father, I guess you could say if only you hadn't loved him so, we wouldn't be here today. If only you hadn't married him, it wouldn't have ended. Truly an inspiration, and I, I hope that tonight goes off famously. Thank I've you. seen the rehearsals. You have uh, for the last two days. I've been filming them, yeah, you and I think, you're, I think you're going to have a beautiful night.